A Ring of Changes by Denise Levertov. Shells, husks, the wandering of autumn seeds, the loitering of curled indoor leaves and dry leaves holding by a cobweb to the bark many days before falling. Cracking husk, afraid it may reveal a dirty emptiness, afraid its hazelnut may be green, bitter, of no account. Seed, cling to the hard earth. Some footstep will grind you in. New leaf, open your green hand. Old leaf, fall and rot, enriching your rich brotherhood. Hazelnut, know when ripeness has hardened you and sweetened you. To shed this fake face as a snakeskin, paper dragon, the winds will tear. To dig shame up, a buried bone, and tie it to my breast. Would it change in time to an ornament? Could it serve to be carved with new designs? I look among your papers for something that will give you to me until you come back and find where are my dreams, your dreams? Have they not nourished my life? Didn't I poach among them as now on your desk? My cheeks grown red and my hair curly as I roasted your pheasants by my night fire. My dreams are gone off to hunt yours. I won't take them back unless they find yours. They must return torn by your forests. Unremembered. Our dreams move together in our dark heads, wander in landscapes unlit by our candle eyes, eyes of self-love and self-disgust, eyes of your love for me kindling my cold heart, eyes of my love for you flickering at the edge of you. Among the tall elders of the hereafter, my father had become a foolish rose, his face beaming from among petals of sunset pink open as a daisy, a rose walking, tagging at the heels of the wise, having found a true form. The tree of life is growing in a corner of the living room, held to its beams by nails that encircle, not pierce its stem. From its first shoots, many leaves, then a long, curved and back-curving bare stretch. And above, many leaves, many new shoots, spreading left along the wall and right towards your work table. Casal's cello, a live broadcast, the resistances of the live bow, the passion manifest in living hands, not smoothed out on wax, speaks from across the room and the tree of life answers with its green silence and apparent stillness. The cello is hollow, and the stems are hollow. The space of the cello is shaped. No other form would resound with the same tones. The stems at their branchings off widen and narrow to new growth. As bow touches strings, a voice is heard. At the articulations of green, a path moves toward a leaf. There is space in us, but the lines and planes of its form are what we reach for and fall, touching nothing outside ourselves, and yet standing somewhere within our own space, in its darkness. Buds are knots in our flesh, nodules of pain. What holds us upright once we have faced immeasurable darkness? The black point at our eye center, were we suspended, museum butterflies by a filament from a hidden nail? Has it broken when we begin to fall slowly, without desire? But we don't fall. The floor is flat, the round earth is flat, and we stand on it. And though we lie down and fill our lungs with choking dust and spread our arms to make a cross, after a while we rise and creep away. Walk from one room to another, on our feet again.
Your work table is close to the tree, not a tree, perhaps a vine. In time, the leaves will reach the space above it, between the windows. Cello and vine commune in the space of a room. What will speak to you? What notes of abundance strike across the living room on your bowed head and down curved back? Watch the beloved vine. We can't see it move. Listen. Listen. We are in this room together. You are alone, forming darkness into words, dark on white paper. I am alone, with the sense of your anguish. The tree of life is growing in the room, the living room the workroom. Between the white louvers, nectarine light, and on the carpets, earth brown, amber entered, filled, unpeopled space with presence. From the doorway we saw harmonies and heard measured colors of light, not quite awake and so awake to correspondences. A room in a house in the city, became for a space of time finely drawn, November morning, a holy apple field. And from the table to the crimson blanket, from the other carved table to the ashes of last night's fire, slanted louvered light, passing without haste. We watched from the doorway between sleeping and waking, green to the white ceiling, drew the vine.